A few days ago, while preparing some lessons in the fundamentals of logic, I stumbled onto an interesting example that was used in one of my old textbooks. So for today, we are not focusing on the logic aspect of the example, but the idea that is being conveyed in the statements that were adapted from an essay by Thomas L. Friedman in the New York Times on the crisis due to the lack of an exceptional high school science education. On December 5th, 2004, Thomas Friedman wrote an essay called Fly Me to the Moon in the New York Times, which I will deliver an opinion on at a later date. Today, I am just going to read the adapted version, which I stumbled onto, and then I will briefly comment on the statements. So here is the adapted version. We are facing a mounting crisis. The generation of scientists, engineers, and mathematicians produced by President John Kennedy's challenge to put a man on the moon is slowly retiring. And because of the steady erosion of science, math, and engineering education in U.S. high schools, the generation of American scientists is not being replenished. If we don't do something soon to reverse this erosion, then we are not going to have the scientific foundation to sustain our high standard of living in 15 to 20 years. All right, well, let's take a look at the first statement. The first statement, we are facing a mounting crisis. Agreed, we are. So let's go right to the next statement. Next statement is the generation of scientists, engineers, and mathematicians produced by President John Kennedy's challenge to put a man on the moon is slowly retiring. I 100% agree with this statement. The youngest of these people would arguably be born in 1967, making the youngest of them about 53 years old. Of course, the majority are much older. Let's say a 13 year old heard Kennedy's 1962 moon speech and buckled down and became a scientist. That kid would be 72 years old today and about 56 years old when the essay was written, which is certainly within a decade of retiring. Anyway, no one would disagree that the scientists that got us to the moon are retiring or are already retired. Statement three. And because of the steady erosion of science, math, and engineering education in the US high schools, that generation of American scientists is not being replenished. Again, I cannot disagree with that statement for the most part. It seems to me, and this is just an opinion, that students in NASA's glory days chose science because of the excitement of exploration and visiting new worlds whereas many of those who chose a science track today didn't really choose. Some counselor chose the track for them. Now who's going to be more motivated? Someone who's excited about their science major and what they're going to do with that knowledge? Or the other case, where someone guided the student's choice with lack of inspiration? In the latter case, obtaining a position or a job or, or something that just is a job is not the same thing as living an adventure. Finally, the if-then statement. 
the if then statement saying if we don't do something soon to reverse this erosion then we are not going to have the scientific foundation to sustain our high standard of living in 15 to 20 years. I don't necessarily disagree with this statement, but I must say it's not an inspiring statement. In the world of human motivation, great achievements usually don't come from maintaining standards, no matter how high. Keep in mind that the great brain power that works in places like SpaceX or Apple work for the idea and not for the money. And these companies, the brightest individuals, work for a third the pay they could get somewhere else. This speaks to human motivation. Human motivation comes from following a grand vision. Doing something or being part of something that exceeds the boundaries of imagination. That something opens the mind to wonder even more than ever and creates an unstoppable passion for science. We Alien Institute members believe in all things that inspire the passion for science. And we creatively push forward to solve the mysteries of the galaxy and beyond. As Steve Jobs once said, let's put a dent in the universe.